It's another raw video from your favorite YouTube scout, Draft Raw Authentic. Yes, I'm finally here making another video. And like I said, it's a raw one, so there will be no edits. And if you already know, I'm doing my 32 for 32 draft breakdown series where I talk about 32 teams for 32 days and I do an NFL draft breakdown for each and every team. Now, if you're seeing this video, I've done every single team except for this one. This is the last team. This is the 32nd team. This is the 32nd day. And if you could tell by the title, that is the NFC South 2017 champs, New Orleans Saints. So let's just get into it. With the first pick, the New Orleans Saints selected Marcus Davenport. Now, with that selection, I'm going to just say this. To give up two first-round picks and a third-round pick for a player that won this draft class pass rushing, just that the pass rushing defensive end, the draft class, it wasn't that great. It was like Bradley Chubb. It was then you drop down a lot. Then you had Marcus Davenport to me, and then you drop down a lot, and then whoever else was next to you know whatever. Marcus Davenport to me is a guy that in most drafts would have probably been a late second round. I mean, a late first round second round pick. Um, this is a guy that I wouldn't have traded up for. Um, and not to say that he's not a good pass rusher, because I actually do like him. I like his potential a lot more um, than a lot of play. You know, a lot of the other defensive ends in the draft. Not Bradley Chubb, but just him in general. Marcus Davenport. I just wouldn't have gave up that much. Um, one thing I did, I am also salty about, is that I'm a Ravens fan, and uh, oh, it's not that I wanted Marcus Davenport. No, that's not the that's not the case. I'm just mad because y'all traded to the Packers and y'all gave him two first round picks and uh, the Ravens definitely would have traded with you <laughs> two first round picks. And looking at it, I don't think there would have been a team that would have picked Marcus Davenport ahead of us or we would we wasn't going to pick Davenport. I'm just telling you that right now. And I, like I said, I don't think there was a team uh, who was picking 15 at this this past season. Uh, you know, it don't even matter. But I don't think there was a team that was going to be picking. So, honestly, I kind of thought that was a, a little stupid. I think uh, it was supposed to be the Cardinals and the Raiders traded down. The Raiders weren't picking him. They were going offensive line the whole way. Even though they could have used Davenport, they was going offensive line the whole way. So, But anyway, just not to get off track when it came down to it. Um, I'm just That's the only thing I'm concerned about. I think you... Definitely got a good player, but that's the only thing where I'm just like, that was stupid. But it is what it is. They're trying to win now, and they were trying to make sure that they got at least the second best pass rusher in this draft. Now, with their next pick was in the third round, and that was Traquan Smith, wide receiver, UCF. I was not a huge fan of Traquan. I thought he was a solid receiver on tape, an okay receiver. I thought that he just kind of brings you... You know, just good, solid traits. Just being a good, solid receiver. It was nothing. I feel as though his, his highest ceiling will be a basically a number two receiver in this league. Um, and what I mean is, is that, like, someone like Michael Thomas that is on your team, is he, I thought of him as a number one receiver. And that's what he became. Traquan Smith, to me, he's the number two receiver, and that's what he's probably going to be. Um, picking him in the third round, that's actually good value. You want to get t starting type of players in each player that you pick. You want to. Um, and and number one type of guys, if whether it's number one corner or number one, your left tackle or whatever, all that, yada, yada, yada. When it comes to Traquan Smith, I think that they got exactly what they wanted in terms of the number two guy. Um but he's just a solid receiver. It's nothing to me that's really, really special. But it's nothing that is, like, terrible about him. So, you know, it is what it is. With their next pick, they chose Rick Leonard, tackle from Florida State. I've mentioned this statement a bunch of times. I used two different, dra uh, two different draft websites to sort out prospects, to watch tape of them. And his name never actually popped up. Um, if his name was on there, 
maybe I just got lost or skipped it. I don't know, but I, I don't even remember hearing his name or seeing it. So um, I don't have nothing when it comes to Rick Leonard. But I do, I can talk about their next pick, and that's Natrell Jamerson. This is a player that I was kind of a huge fan of. I think that he was one of the most underrated safeties in this draft. He played with so much heart out there. Like, I don't think you understand how much heart he played. And for the New Orleans Saints to get a guy like him, you they definitely got a beast of a player. This dude played with so much confidence, so much effort, so much of, of that no-give-up attitude, such a high motor for safety. This dude was just going, 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 going. To me, he's going to be the steal of this team's draft. I think that... They got a really good player when it came to uh, Natrell Jamison. And he's a guy that he's going to beast on special teams. And when you put him out there as, you know, just sub packages, and then maybe eventually as a starter, he's a guy that's going to beast out. Trust me when I say it. He's a little bit undersized, but he's a really good player that I think he was a little bit underrated. So it is what it is. Um, with their next three picks, right? And I hate doing this because there's other drafts where I can just go through the whole draft and talk about each player. Then there's some drafts where it comes to the end of their draft, and I'm not able to really go deep into any of these players. This is the type of situation where, um, like I said with the Rick Leonard situation, Kareem Moore, cornerback from Boston College, I didn't watch him. Um, Boston Scott, running back from uh, Louisiana Tech, or you know, Tech. I didn't watch him, so I can't really give much to him. And Will Clapp is a guy that was hurt this past season. I did see some tape of him the season before, and I wasn't impressed. You know, if you ask me what I think about Will Clapp, I don't think about Will Clapp. Uh, I just, I don't, I don't. That's a quote from Vach Lombardi. <laughs> I had to put that in there. It was one of the funniest things I ever heard. So somebody asked him, what do you think about Will Clapp? Like, literally asked him what you thought about Will Clapp. And he was like, I don't think about Will Clapp. <laughs> and, it was, and it really was just like, yeah, because I don't neither. But anyway, <laughs> overall, I think that, like I said, I don't think they made the greatest decision for trading up for Marcus Davenport for what they gave up. Um, I wish they would have traded with my Ravens. Maybe I would have given him a high grade, like thank you, but um, <laughs> but like still, even when it even just traded up with the Ravens, I think it was a dumb decision to trade two first round picks for. But I understand what they were trying to do. I think that out of all their picks, because I really only know maybe four of these guys, I think three of them are pretty good. So overall, this is a solid draft. It's not a great draft. It's not a draft that I think that it's gonna really put them over the edge like last year's draft did. But I think that it was a very solid draft, and I think that they got some good, solid players out of it. But I don't think that they got a game-changing type of player out of any of these picks. Marcus Davenport can definitely be a game-changer, game changer, but I don't think he's that big of time a game-changer like that. But he can be one. The upside. So um, if you like this video, please hit that like button. Because this is my last draft breakdown, I can't say if you want to see more draft breakdowns. I can just say if you want to see more of my content where I do talk about every team in the league, not just my Ravens or what I'm doing with the New Orleans Saints. I talk about everybody. So if you're seeing this video, you weren't a fan of Saints, but you just, you know, I'm just saying, please subscribe to my channel. I go and I just talk about rookies and guys that will be coming into the draft next year and stuff like that. I won't go into guys that's already in the league. I will go into next year of guys that were drafted this year and talk about them next year, but I won't go deeper in all, all that stuff neither. So it is what it is. Also, if you didn't like what I had to say about any of these draft picks, please comment so we can debate and please share this video so other people can comment and other people can debate and we can build this huge draft community. Once again, this is Draft for Authentic. I thank you. Anybody that literally saw every single one of these draft breakdowns, I thank you for watching. Honestly, it's truly a blessing. Since I've been doing these draft breakdowns, I've gone up 20 subscribers. I just started March 3rd. It is... The end of May is almost June 3rd. It's May 31st. So I thank you for watching this. Please subscribe. Please keep on just, you know, just looking at me. Just keep on supporting me. And I guarantee you, eventually, 
this where I'm at, it's going to get better. It's going to get bigger. I'm going to have a lot more content and a lot more stuff that I know that my viewers will enjoy. So anyway, thank you for watching. Goodbye.